What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we'll be going over some Overwatch settings that I think you should be using in order to optimize your performance and gameplay. We'll also be going over a few hero specific settings and changes that I think you should be using to help optimize your gameplay. If you enjoyed today's video or found any of this information helpful, please leave a like and let's go ahead and hop right into the video. The first section we'll talk about is your video settings. For your display mode, you want it to always have this set to full screen. Having this on anything other than full screen will increase your input lag so it's just best to always play on full screen. Your target display should always be set to the best match or your monitor if you're running dual monitor. The resolution is one that really kind of trips some people up sometimes, but you always want to have this set to your highest resolution. But furthermore, you also want to have this set to the highest frame rate, which will be the number that is in parentheses. So for me, I have mine set to 240 and I play on 1440p, so I have this one selected here at the bottom. A general rule of thumb is your best option is going to also be the one at the bottom. Your aspect ratio, you should play 16 by 9. You can play 16 by 10 if you want to have a slight stretch, but I just use 16 by 9. Dynamic render scale, I have set to off. And then render scale, I have set to custom, and I set my in-game resolution to 100%. My frame rate, I also have set to custom, and I just uncap it because my computer is pretty beefy and I can handle this amount of frames. V-Sync, you pretty much always want to have off. I have triple buffering off, and I have reduced buffering also off. For NVIDIA Reflex, this is another setting that's going to be pretty dependent on what PC you have, but for me, I have mine set to Enable Plus Boost. Generally speaking, if you have any sort of new gen graphics card, you want to have this set to Enable Plus Boost. For my gamma correction, contrast, and brightness, I have all set to default. I know some people like to change these, but honestly, with my monitor, I like the way that it looks, so I just have it set right here. Moving on to graphics quality, I set my preset to low and then I have adjusted some of these settings which we'll go through now. The high quality upscaling I believe is actually the sharpness and I have mine just set to default because in my NVIDIA control panel I actually have sharpening done in there. Texture quality I have set to medium. Texture filtering quality I have set to epic. This does not affect performance so the higher the better. Local fog detail we have set to low. Dynamic reflections we have set to off. Next you want to set local fog detail to low and you'll want to turn dynamic reflections off. Dynamic reflections basically just make it so where anything that has a surface that can show a reflection like a puddle of water or any sort of glass or even a car this will prevent that reflection from showing which will actually increase your performance shadow detail will have set to low this is an option that you can turn off but it is better to have it set to low as it can give you a competitive advantage if someone's in a position where you can't actually see them you might be able to see their shadow which can give you a competitive advantage next you're going to want to have model detail set to low having this setting set to low will remove any sort of unnecessary clutter that you don't need on the map Effects detail you want to also have set to low. Having this any higher will also affect your performance and give extra visual clutter. Lighting quality I have set to ultra for in areas where there is lighting, it'll help make things a lot brighter and it plays a very little role on your frames. Anti-aliasing I have set to low and refraction quality I also have set to low. Screenshot quality isn't really necessary unless you plan on taking pictures, which at that point you can set it at the higher the better. Ambient occlusion we have set to off, local reflections we have set to off, and damage effects we also have set to low. In details, the only settings you'll want to change is having display performance stats on, and then you want to have show frame rate, show GPU temperature, and show network latency all on. And now for sound settings, most of these are all gonna be personal preference, but there is one that I think that you can turn on which will help provide you with a lot more information that you may not notice while you're playing. Play sound when teammate eliminated will leave you with this sound that you hear right here. Having this on will give you audio cues to let you know how you're doing in each engagement. If you hear this sound going off a lot, it's better to back off and disengage so you don't get staggered. Next for controls, I run 800 DPI with a 3.6 sensitivity. And here is my crosshair settings. I run 177 with 100% opacity and zero dot. It's also important to make sure you have scale with resolution on and show accuracy off if you want to keep your reticle looking the same. Some heroes I know it can be advantageous to have show accuracy on, but for me, I just have it always set to off. And lastly, under general, I have show friendly outlines on always. This help me see teammates whenever they're in darker areas of the map. The rest of controls is pretty much all just personal preference. Under gameplay, I have enable post matchmaking auto queue on, this will make it so when you're in quick play, it'll just automatically queue you into the next game. Limit client sin rate and limit server sin rate, I have both set to off. Lastly, under miscellaneous, you want to make sure that you have this enable high precision mouse input on. The reason this is, is because every time you swipe your mouse, it is going to send information to the server. If you have this set to off, you're going to receive a lot more stuttery, less smooth swipe than you would having this set to on. This is the best visual representation that I can provide you for it because it's kind of hard to explain. Just know that you want to have this set to on. Under social is where you can choose to have your career profile public or private or friends only. I have mine always set to public. It, doesn't really matter for me if people see my stats. 
other than that, there really is no other setting that's notable in here. Lastly, for accessibility, you want to have camera shake set to reduced. Why this is even a setting is kind of weird to me. And for a HUD shake, you want to have set to off as well. This will make it so where the bottom of your HUD, where it has your name or your ultimate does not shake. For colorblindness is where you can find your colorblind settings. I like to use enemy color as yellow as I am red green colorblind. And I have my friendly color set to aqua as it's more of a deeper blue that I can see better. After you finish applying those settings, here are a few hero settings that I think you should also be using. For D.Va, it'd be better to have hold boosters on. This will make it so whenever you're using your boost, you can just hold the button and release it in order to stop your boost. This will give you a lot more control over your boost rather than having to push the button and then push it again to stop it. And you also want to make sure that toggle defense matrix is turned off. Having this on can make you waste your defense matrix a lot longer than you actually need to. Next for Ash, I like to have toggle zoom off, but I do know some players that do like to have this on. For me, it is more fluid to have this off. Also, if you want to have your sensitivity feel more one-to-one, -one, you want to make sure that you have relative aim sensitivity while zoom set to 51.47 i have mine set to 52 percent you can also have it set to 51 percent and it'll feel a lot more one-to-one -one whenever you're aiming what that means is your hip fire sensitivity and your scope sensitivity will feel a lot more alike lastly for recoil recovery aim compensation you want to have this set to off for cassidy the only thing you want to have is recoil recovery aim compensation set to on for Echo, you want to make sure they have duplicate requires target compensation set to off. This just provides another step in order to activate your ultimate, which can actually get you eliminated in many cases because sometimes you just need to be quick and hurry up and copy a target. That way you can replenish your health. However, you can mess with your duplicate sensitivity, but this is just personal preference. Lastly, you want to make sure you have hold to flight on. This is, works just like Diva's boost. Whenever you're holding your flight, you will continue to fly. And whenever you let go of it, it'll just simply stop. Children does not have any specific hero settings, but one thing that I've recently started doing is actually changing my primary and secondary fire. My primary fire I have set to my right click and my secondary fire I have set to my left click. This feels a lot more natural and more fluid. So this is something that I would suggest you try out. For Widowmaker, just like Ash, you should not have toggle zoom on. But again, this is just personal preference. If you want to have your sensitivity feel more one to one with Widow, you want to set this to 37.89. You could also set this either to 37 or 38. Your grapple hook sensitivity, it's best to have this set lower, which will give you more control over your hook. Having it set higher can actually cause it to grapple onto things that you may not have meant to. Lastly, recoil aim compensation you want to have set to on. For Lucio, you want to have hold crossfade set to off. This will make it a lot more difficult and clunky whenever trying to switch between boost and heal. Allow backwards wall ride you actually want to have set to on. This is defaulted to off for some reason, but it's best to have this on. Having this on will make it a lot more fluid when playing Lucio and whenever you're engaging someone or trying to fight someone it'll allow you to move backwards while also sticking to the wall or wall running while you're facing them and still trying to fight them and lastly for wall jump and release you want to have this off because this will actually give you more control over your movement for Ana, if you want to have the one-on-one -on -one sensitivity it's the same as widows it's 37.89 i'll go zoom you want to have off recoil recovery aim compensation set to on then a nano boost requires target confirmation you're going to want to have this set to off again this is another step that you don't need you can turn your nano boost sensitivity down more which will make it a little bit more fluid but that's just all personal preference lastly for mercy having toggle beam connection again i believe you should have this off for guardian angel target priority though this is better to have set to prefer facing target this will allow you to be able to still heal whoever you are trying to heal while also giving you more control over your movement making you a much harder target to hit for guardian angel sensitivity and beam sensitivity these are both going to be personal preference but turning them down could possibly give you more control over each of them but there you have my complete overwatch 2 settings i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you want to see more smash the sub button and i'll see you guys in the next video